couple of weeks ago I did a video about how YouTube had changed mine and Matt's life all for the better and during the video I said if anyone had any additional questions that I didn't answer I failed to answer they could put them in the comments so today I'm going to share some of those questions and the answers to them there's a, there was enough that I'm probably going to divide it into two videos so I may save some for the next video but for today I was going to go over some of the first ones now one of the very first questions was what do we edit with what do we edit with now I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute but just in a nutshell the shortest answer is we use iMovie iMovie is what we use and I'll talk more about that in just a moment and another question we had was lighting. Do we need to use lighting? Do we use lighting? Well, we do because, now right now I'm not using any lighting because I'm outside. If I'm outside, I don't use any. Uh, we don't. But inside our house, since we live on the north side of the mountain, it is very dark a lot of the times. We don't get direct sunlight. We don't get a lot, a lot of direct sunlight in the summer, but especially not in the winter. So I do have two lights. Uh, I can link to them if you're interested in seeing them, but they're fairly inexpensive lights that um, I just found on Amazon. They have like a cover. They're adjustable so they can, if I was sitting down like this, they can be low, but they can go up high when I'm cooking in the kitchen. Uh, very simple setup and fairly inexpensive for lights. Now, I'm sure you can get really expensive ones and they'd probably be better. You could probably get cheaper ones too. That, those were just the ones I got in the first when I very first started and realized really quickly because my house is so dark, especially in the kitchen, that I needed some kind of light. Um, and the greatest benefit of light is, of course, so that people can see what you're doing, but your camera, whatever kind of camera you're using, especially if you're using a um, not your cell phone. Cell phones are really good at kind of picking up and brightening light, using the light better than a typical camera like what I'm using right now. So it really, that extra light just gives the camera something to work with so that you end up with a better picture. Whether you're taking pictures or especially with the video, it just gives it a better way to focus and uh, really zero in on what you're doing. So I do think lights, is it, if you're uh, going to be a YouTube person, a content creator, after you get to a certain point and you realize, that, hey, I do like this and I'm going to continue to do it, then maybe that's when you would, when you would think about uh, investing in lights. And then also that same person had asked, well, when we do use lights, so do we just, how do you store all that stuff basically? Like, do we just leave tripods? I'm using a tripod right now. Do we use it? Um, the things that we use, the tripod, the lightings, do we just leave them out all the time? Yes, we do. <laughs> Not because... Um, I mean, you could put them up. It would be certainly nicer. If you had a dedicated room, you could just put them in. I kind of ferry them back and forth from my dangerous room. If you've watched our videos, you know we call our spare bedroom, our guest room that. We do all kinds of things in it. And the, the reason we call it the dangerous room is when Corey and Katie were little, our daughters, they shared a bedroom. And in that dangerous room, we had like our little office area. We had a, an extra bed for, you know, whoever come to stay with us. And, but we also had stuff we didn't want them to, to mess with when they were really little. And we would say, you can't, you know, you can't go in there because there's dangerous things in there. Now, it wasn't dangerous like they, you know, just butcher knives laid out or anything. It was just stuff we didn't want them to bother. And um, I remember one time they convinced me they were big enough to play in there because it was another place to play. And then, of course, it was off limits to them. So they wanted to go in there and play. And, and I let them. And I shouldn't have. Or maybe I should have watched them better. But they pretty quickly plugged up the iron and then set it down in the carpet. So there was a, a print of the iron. And so then they were banished from the dangerous room for a, a while longer after that. But because we would say that when they were really little, you know, just trying to say you can't go in there, we had like one of those doorknob things so they couldn't open it. Uh, we just kept calling it that, even after they got big. And eventually, Corey used that room for her bedroom. Her and Katie, you know, decided they wanted their room of their own. And um, so then it was Corey's room. But as soon as Corey married Austin, somehow we just continued, we just reverted back to saying it was the dangerous room, even though. Our daughters are, you know, 27 years old now. Anyway, that's just a funny story about the room. But so, to get back to the question, I, I don't, you can, the lights all fold up that I use and small and you can put them in a bag and you could stick that bag under the bed. I think in the beginning I kind of did that. 
but it's just such a hassle to undo them and put them back or it is for me everybody has to figure out what works best for them that I just leave them put up and so I just carry them back to the dangerous room and then I'll carry them in the kitchen or if the girls are going to use one maybe they'll carry one in the basement or whatever uh, tripod's the same way my tripod this camera is on it goes into a, you know it would fit into a bag about this big once it's all folded up I, I rarely ever do that the only time I fold it up is if I'm going to be taking it somewhere else like maybe going to interview someone I'll take it then I'll fold it up and put it in the car just because it's easier to carry but most of the time I leave my stuff out if you had like a dedicated room whether it was a dangerous room or a, a studio or something that would be that would be fantastic but I know lots of people don't have that uh, and even though I say I carry them in there I'm carrying them in there amid all the other stuff that's in there so it's not like it's a a room dedicated just to that another question we had because during that video I talked about um, how wonderful it was that me and Matt got to do this for a living and you know how uh, it was wonderful when I could leave my job and do it full-time and then when he got to leave his last August how it was just like a dream come true for both of us but of course one of the questions was about and I mentioned about insurance that that's one of the things Matt and I worried about until we got to a point where we could afford to pay for insurance now what we did was we went to where we have our car insurance and our house insurance Farm Bureau uh, it's the only insurance company I've ever had since I first started driving way back before I'd ever met Matt and so that's who I went and talked to and they were able to help me and so then some of the question the next question along with that was well is it expensive and is it um, comparable to what you had I would say it's way more expensive because if you if you have insurance through you where you work typically your employer is paying part of it so like when Matt worked for the county or we both worked for the state for the college or even when I worked at the folk school so they were paying part of that and I was just paying a small amount or Matt was just paying a small amount or whatever so it is more expensive than that because you're paying the whole amount yourself and then also is it comparable well there's different plans so that depends on if you if you get the the best plan or not I would say the, the plan that me and Matt went with is not the best but not the worst kind of in the middle but it's still not as good as what we had um, it's more of a I guess if you think about it it would be you know it's it does pay for doctor visits and things like that I don't mean to say that it's terrible but thinking about the deductibles and stuff they're higher but um, I guess you could think of it like catastrophic if it was like that but it also does pay though for you know your physicals and so many doctors visits a year and you know your prescriptions and things like that thankfully for me and Matt we've always been pretty healthy uh, I still think insurance is a great thing to have and I said you know I hope people have it if it's if they're possible to have it you're really lucky if you work at a place that has good insurance um, I was always fortunate in that regard and Matt was too so that we worked places that had good policies policies and made it made it quite nice if you did have to go to the doctor or in the case of me having Corey and Katie all those years ago that was a, a real blessing to have good insurance because I had a difficult pregnancy and you know then had a c-section and all that anyway I would say uh, it's not it's not as affordable but it's because we're not the we don't have an employer paying their part and then also it's not quite as good but we were really pleased with it so I don't know that's hard for me to answer it depends I guess on if you like when I first left my job I don't think we could have afforded to pay for the insurance but then we got to a point where we could with Matt once Matt left his job that's what we had to make sure of I hope that helped but I would just suggest talking to your maybe whoever you have your car or your home insurance with and and let them help you and guide you this was an interesting one if you didn't pay uh, if YouTube didn't pay would we still make videos well it's interesting uh, to think about my first reaction was well no uh, I wouldn't because it takes so much time and so much energy it really is like a full-time job and I would still have to be doing my other full-time job and I did YouTube a little bit uh, for a little part of time before I was able to leave my job I didn't do near the videos that I do now though I didn't put out as many videos and it was really hard to balance all that and then you know you add in all the other things of life so that was my first reaction but then after I thought about it I thought well no 
uh, Tipper, you have. You've been doing videos for free for you know since 2008. Uh, my blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn, that's free for anybody that wants to read it. And from the very beginning, we put videos on it. They were all mostly music videos that I, I would share on there. But still, that was videos. So the Blind Pig and the Acorn YouTube channel is not monetized. It's still got videos. So I guess um, I that I would still do it. Like if I'd just become enamored with video and I wanted to share it on the blog, I'd still have to have a place to put it. So I would still have to, if I put it on the Blind Pig and the Acorn, and I did that a few times over the years, and I would just unlist the video. Not that I didn't want anybody to see it, but if it was a video that wasn't just music, because that was kind of our music archive, so I could do that. So my first instinct was to say no, but then when I thought about it, I thought, well, I, I would still do it if I if it would help me with my endeavor of the blind pig and the acorn, which is, was celebrating Appalachia. It was the same thing. It just wouldn't be as many videos for sure, though. It might be one here and there once a month, once every two or three months or something like that, just because it takes so much time and so much energy. Um, being a YouTuber really is a full-time job for sure. There's so many moving parts of it um, even beyond just the actual video one. Right along with that one kind of is, is it still possible to succeed on YouTube? I would say yes, yes it is. YouTube is the top streaming service, uh, streaming uh, service in America. I don't even know, maybe in the world or whatever, but it's really, really popular. And one thing, part of YouTube that has really skyrocketed over, I would say, even just since me and Matt have started, even since 21, 2021, um, or 2020, is the um, being able to watch YouTube on your TV, like with your Roku device or whatever it is that you use. I think that has just skyrocketed. I mean, it's like went up, like, I think it's you know, like 400% or something. It's crazy how many people now watch YouTube on their TV. So they're watching it instead of, you know, typical traditional TV channels and those sort of things. So I think that that growth is going to continue at least for the foreseeable future. And when you think about that growth, then there's, then you see that, well, there's room for, for more people, more people, more creators. I do think it's, um, I'm sure, difficult to become a creator to where you're actually gaining money. I know it is. I, I had a real advantage because of the Blind Pig and the Acorn because I had that following from all those years of doing the blog. So I had, I kind of, I mean, it's not really unfair uh, advantage. I just entered at a different space than if you were just starting fresh and, and nobody didn't really know who you were and you didn't have an audience. I kind of had an audience that I brought with me and then that helped me um, do well enough to then gain more audience, you know, so uh, but I, I definitely think it's still worth trying if it's something that you want to do and I will kind of talk about that a little bit Because uh, I think one of the next questions is about the equipment So I would say if you, if you think I, I want to do this I want to do YouTube now There's lots of different reasons to do YouTube too or do videos. You don't have to do it for a monetary reason um you could do it just to preserve your history, your family, just to have a record of what you want to talk about. Maybe you want to show how to do stuff. You know, there's all various uh, different reasons. But if you are going to do it kind of like a, to be a job and you're really, you know, uh, going to give it your all, I would say don't really buy any equipment. If you have a cell phone, use your cell phone until you see if you like it or not. Because there's a lot of people that think they, they will and they'll try it for a little bit and they find out this is just not what I thought it was and I don't really enjoy this at all. Um, and then you wouldn't have wanted to have you know, wasted a lot of money on equipment that you were not going to use. So that would be uh, my advice about that. But if you, you know, you can it, most creators, not all creators, but most creators uh, like me, they, they upload several times a week. There's some that are to a point that they maybe just upload once every week, once every two weeks or something. They have such a huge following, they're still able to do that. But then there's all kinds of people thinking about documenting things and, and teaching tutorials. Maybe you're going to teach you know, how to do something. Then you just, you know, maybe you just upload once a month, once every three or four months, something like that. So um, there are lots of different reasons to think about being a creator not all monetary wise I think for the monetary if you if you want to do that you do have to be more uh, committed in a lot of ways but especially to frequently upload and like to to really you know stay on a schedule of uploading I think that helps so then what kind of equipment what kind of equipment do we use 
this camera that I'm using right now is like the workhorse camera. I've had it from the very beginning, and it's the one I use most often. And it is an M50 Canon, and it has a wide-angle lens on it. I got that wide-angle lens after I realized when I was in the kitchen it was hard for people to see everything that I was doing if I was cooking or something. And I, I just leave it on it all the time. It's just I use it outside, inside. Right now when I'm talking, whatever it is, I just use that same wide-angle lens. Uh, and the camera has been fantastic. It, it may tear up tomorrow, but it's got used, I've used it over and over and over and over. It's just like a workhorse. I carry it around. It's dirty on the outside where I've had dirty hands outside and touched it, uh, but it just does really, really well. To go on it, I have like a road microphone just to help pick up my voice better. And then I have like a little fuzzy thing uh, on, on it to uh, help with wind if I was outside like a, a microphone cover is what it is you've probably seen them on videos the little fuzzy things and then I have it, it on a tripod and I've had this may be the second tripod seems like something happened to the first one something broke on it or something but it's just a plain tripod nothing fancy and this is just a simple setup very simple and of course inside the camera is the SD cards I, I found out really quickly I needed more than one battery so that I could swap them out you know one could be charging because if you did a long video your battery would go dead and you'd be right in the middle of it maybe with SD cards the same thing you may need you know several SD cards so that one gets full you don't have to stop and go take all that off you can just get you a new card and continue on so this is my setup that I use the most often along with I would say my iPhone I, I have an iPhone I've had um, maybe two different ones while I've been doing videos on YouTube and I use it a lot especially outside for if I'm gonna show you something on the ground or a lot of times outside I would use an iPhone they just have such good picture quality too and if you're on a trip or you're in the woods or something it's just so much easier to carry your phone on and you can get tripods for it I have a tripod for it to keep it keep it still um, and make it the picture quality be better but that's so much easier than taking taking this camera with me one other thing on this camera now that I'm looking at it in the sunshine out like I'm in here today I have like a little screw on screen that goes on it so it helps um, helps with that brightness if I didn't have it on especially if I'm outside in the sunshine you just turn white you know you can't see anything it's just so so light and bright that you just go away so that was a real game changer and I only found that maybe last summer maybe the summer before but maybe last summer I say I only found it I had it I had it and I just I don't know what made me someday one day probably trying to video outside and, and the sun was too bright and I thought oh, if you just had something to put in front of it and I thought well I do somewhere so I went and found it and uh, the one I had didn't quite fit but then I realized it was going to really work so then I was able to order one the other camera that we use we do have another one that Matt got me for Christmas a couple of years ago and it is a GH5 Panasonic it has beautiful beautiful picture quality it's really really nice but it's really really complicated so i'm just not that good at using it most of the time if i use it i make matt set it up for me and and he knows it better than i do um, it, it's just so tempting for me to go back to this one that i've known and used you know so long so uh, that one is a really really great camera it's just that it's more complicated than this one I mentioned the lighting before, so definitely we we'll use that. I mentioned the microphone on this one, the SD cards that come in really handy. And with the SD cards, um, sometimes you need, depending on your computer setup, you may need, like if you have a laptop, you may need an um, SD card reader or an adapter to actually get the footage off. So those are handy to have, especially if maybe you have a laptop and a desk desktop and you go back and forth and I do that. So I, I need adapters for that. And I mentioned the extra batteries too, extra batteries. And the tripods I have, I mentioned this one and then I think I mentioned the one that I had for the, uh, for the iPhone, for your phone. Uh, and that's, that's about it as far as equipment goes except when it comes to computers now when I first started all the years I've had computers of course I had them because of um, you know thinking of the blog and schoolwork for Corey and Katie and all that I always had like a Windows based version of a computer because they were they were not as expensive as Apple products 
when I worked at the college, I had an Apple computer, and I had to do some video work, and I had to do a lot of photo work, and I realized just how great they are at that. And then when I worked at the folk school, same thing. I had to do both, and I had a, they had, you know, had an iMac, and it's just, when it comes to messing with photos or video or whatever, they're just uh, really, really good at that. So when I first started doing YouTube, I, of course, couldn't afford that. I couldn't afford the um, having something like that at home, so I still just had to use my Windows, whatever it was I had then. And, and it worked, but it was difficult. And to a certain point, Windows come with Windows Movie Maker. If you have an older computer, you may have it on there. And then at some point, they quit putting that on there. Now, I'd used that in the past. It's just a very, very basic, simple editing software that just come free. So by the time I started with the YouTube, I didn't, my Windows computer didn't have that on it. And I tried to download it. I tried to get it. I tried, and I just, that just never would work. So I ended up buying, and I don't even remember the name of it, some kind of real cheap editing software. Well, what would happen is sometimes it would work fine, but depending on, because when you, you start filming and you're doing a 30-minute video, it's such a large file, it's what I would run into, is that my computer would start to just crash, and the, the little program, which again was cheap, it wasn't like I'd invested a lot of money, would just crash, and I just had a terrible time. It'd take me just days to get it to get far enough along to where I could actually do uh, edit a video. And I knew that uh, what I really needed was an Apple computer, but they were so expensive, I didn't, I just couldn't do that. That was me and Matt wasn't quite out of debt yet, and I sure wasn't going to go in debt for that. And I, I wasn't monetized yet, so it wasn't like I could justify it in any way. And, but I really wanted one, and I really, you know, thought about it and wanted it. And um, I've told this in the, in the other video, and I think in mine and Matt's Get Out of Debt, a video we shared that, you know, after the pandemic, how Miss Cindy decided that she was going to sell her house that she owned in Black Mountain. And she'd always told Matt that would be his inheritance. And anyway, so when she started, really started t talking about selling, selling it, and she was involved in, I mean, every, she was like my biggest fan. So she knew all my struggles and everything about the video and the uh, computers. She said, Tipper, if that house does sell, the first thing you should do is buy a computer, the one you need, the one you need. I was like, that's an awful lot of money. Um, and even though it was Matt's money, you know, it was going to be his inheritance, it still felt weird, like I would be, you know, spent, I don't know, I just felt funny about it. But she just kept on and on and on. She finally said, I don't know anything about computers, but I know that I'm going to buy you one to do this. She really believed in the YouTube, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do one. I'm going to buy you one. So if you, if you're not, you know, either I'm going to buy one, it may be the wrong one, or you better just buy one once the house had sold. So I did. So that was how I got my iMac computer. Um, and it immediately made such a difference. It made my life so much easier, so much easier. And uh, it come with iMovie, so that's why I started using iMovie. It, it never crashed. It never, you know, all those things. It was just fantastic. But that's a really expensive investment. So again, if I was doing it, if I was starting out, I was like I couldn't. I could, I knew that's what I needed, but I couldn't justify it until I, um, I got to. And even by then, by the time Miss Cindy sold the house, I realized, you know things were it looked like that maybe I was going to be monetized I still didn't know what that meant but I was going to be monetized and things were moving in the right direction but I know that's a huge huge uh, expense and that's something you just have to worry about for yourself but it did make all the difference in my um, ability to to edit videos and to use them now of course what happens with those giant files one other piece of equipment is that immediately I mean even no matter how big of a hard drive you get you will eventually fill it up when you start using you know gigabytes worth of uh, video every every day pretty much for me so you have to have backups like a backup system so I have in the beginning I started with just the ones I had used previously for my computers like all my blog stuff was just the little cheap ones or not cheap but you know maybe 50 bucks or something a little thin you've probably seen them I probably have three or four of those and they quickly filled up though once I was using the video and then I got um, had to invest in larger systems of backup so that's something you could you know depending on what kind of computer you use and all that I won't get into the technical part of it but that's something you have to think about because you want to save all that video you might need it again someday of course you worked hard you want to save it because of that 
but um, you have to have a way to store it and you quickly quickly run out of room on your computer now if you are just using your iPhone in the beginning or maybe Android has a, uh, a video editing software on it too I know a lot of people will actually just edit on iMovie on their phone I'm, my eyes are not that good. I have a hard time doing it, and I'm like a desk, desktop person. I have a laptop, but I prefer a desktop with a mouse and, and everything when I'm doing something like that, like editing. Uh, but a lot of people do all that right on their phone, and that's just it. They just use their phone. So there's so many different ways to go about it. Definitely, I would not uh, invest in something like an iMac unless I was sure that that was, you know, and you were at the point that you were like, I love this, and I'm going to do it the rest of my life. But that's pretty much all the equipment. Of course, after I watch this video back when I'm editing it, I'll probably think, why didn't I say this or that? But I think that's, I think that's everything. So one more question was inspiration for each video. Where do we get the inspiration for each video? Well, that's what um, is so wonderful about the Blind Pig and the Acorn. Been doing it since 2008. I have... There's many things that's wonderful about it, but as far as content creation, there's two main points. is that I have researched and studied and lived and breathed <laughs> Appalachia since then, thinking about, you know, the folklore, the food, the culture in every way, the language. You know how I love to talk about language. I'm plum foolish about it. All those things, the music, you know, the people the traditions, all that. I've just lived and breathed and eat it. So I have all that stuff in my head. And there's a lot of things that I've done as a blog post. And then I think, oh, well, now I could do that as a video. It's kind of all there, outlined out. I just need to turn it into a video. So that's where some of the inspiration comes from. And then from the very beginning, way back in 2008, one of my main things was I wanted to celebrate Appalachia but I also wanted to show I always felt like I wanted to show the real Appalachia I, there's like a cardboard cutout I always say that's held up that's not just not true now Appalachia is not a place of perfection there's bad things there's bad people there's horrible things that go on just like there is in all the rest of the country and the rest of the world that's just common everywhere but it's also just a wonderful beautiful place and so often it's just the the cardboard cutout of whether you were a moonshiner or you were so poverty stricken you didn't have shoes you know all those things and and didn't get to go to school school and all those things were held up to be truth even today but they're just it's just not like that not as a whole not the majority so from the beginning I wanted to to show the real true wonder that it is to live here and that included part of our lives you know whether I was you know me and Corey and Katie and Paul were traveling around singing or, or you know I was fixing a meal for my family or whatever all the things I wrote about over the years on the blind pig and the acorn in uh, the closeness of my family well then it just makes sense that I would show that on video too. So that's some of the inspiration is wanting to show what a wonderful life I have. I'm so blessed. God so blessed me in so many different ways from who he let me be born to, to of course salvation, you know, as a believer, but also being born right here in the mountains of Appalachia and it's just a beautiful, wonderful place. And I want to show that, you know, so that's part of my inspiration too. I'm crazy uh, about the language, like I said, but I'm also plum foolish about gardening and being outdoors. And so that's part of it, you know, I, even from where I sit right here at my very own house where I've lived all these years, I never really lived outside this holler very much. I think I was about four years old when we moved here and I left long enough to find Matt and come back. But it inspires me every day from the blue skies. I'm looking at what I see right now. The I can see pine trees and laurels and ivies and oak trees and you know the grass that needs to be mowed and the steps Matt made for me and my raised beds on the bank. It's just inspiring all that is. So as of yet, I've never run out of something to to do a video about. And just like on the blind pig and the acorn, I've never read, run out of things to talk about. So that's where my inspiration comes from and I'll answer one more today and then I'll stop and I'll save the rest but someone asked so if you watch our all of our videos you'll notice that some of them we just leave the camera going and they wanted to know how whose ideal was it to do that well it was it really just happened accidentally of course because if me and Matt sitting outside talking and then we I say my little usual we're so glad you stopped by to help us celebrate Appalachia then once that I say that we're both like you know kind of like okay you know what do we we got to do now we're gonna go cook supper we're gonna 
or maybe we just sit and stare at the the beauty around us or we're talking about what needs to be done next or whatever so the first time it was just natural i just forgot to turn the immediately reach out and turn the camera off and so we just were sitting there whatever it was we were talking about and then that day when i was editing that video to put up i, I just kind of let it go i was didn't end you know i just thought well there's like five minutes left what was we i just somehow just kept letting it play and i was watching it and thinking it's kind of interesting and it kind of shows like what i was saying the realness of of what appalachian life really is you know like me and matter just being ourselves we're we're ourselves pretty much all the time i think that's why you like our videos but in those moments it's like you know like right now i'm talking to you if the camera wasn't here uh, it's not that i'd be a different person but i just wouldn't be focused on the camera so in those moments after we get through with our popsicle and talking or our hot chocolate we're just being like me and matt are every day of the world so after I, that first time, I thought, I don't know, that's really interesting, whatever it was we were talking about, and how we're just kind of being us. wonder if people would like that. wonder if they would like that, or if they would just think it was silly, or would they think I forgot to edit it out, you know, all those things going through my mind. But then I thought, I'm just going to leave it, and I'm just going to see what happens, and people can say, uh, Tipper, you forgot to turn the camera off, or, or they can say, that was really weird, you know, why did you do that? But instead, people said, I love that. I love that we just got to, like, kind of hear what y'all were talking about, and, and you wasn't even thinking about the camera. So we just kept, I just kept doing it. <laughs> and then recently, we've not done it as much, not because um, I wanted to quit doing it, but it's just that our lives have been so busy with the, the changes going on in them that it's like, I have had to say, okay, it's over. Let's go on to the next task. What's going next? So I just hadn't caught any banter or talk or us being ourselves. And I've had a few people say, um, I miss, why are you not doing that? I miss that. So that's really touching to me. And I really love that. And I appreciate all of you, um, everyone that watches our videos. We appreciate, appreciate you so much because you're letting us live our dream life, uh, just to be with our family, you know, be with here together and garden and, uh, raise kids and raise grandkids now and you know all the wonderful things we appreciate you so much so um, I really appreciate that you watch our videos and that you're letting me and Matt and even Corey and Katie and Austin and little Ira letting us live this wonderful beautiful life so we really appreciate you I hope this answered those questions hope you enjoyed hearing that and I'll do the next video in a week or so and answer the rest of them. And of course, if you if you want to add some questions to this video, you can. And I'll just tack them on to that one. And I always am glad when you stop by to help me celebrate Appalachia.